So I was just working on a new personal project that I was going to do. Hopefully, when I get around to finishing it, I'll showcase it to you guys. But I was trying to get some prices from Amazon. Um, and I found out that the traditional methods, the way we were working with it before, doesn't work. So we can no longer use requests from Beautiful Soup to get titles uh, and pricing information from Amazon. So I've got a new way that I want to show you to you guys now. It's nice and easy. It's a bit slower, but it works well. So before we would just be able to uh, do requests and use Beautiful Soup to get the span ID here, and that would give us the information for that note. So the first thing you want to do is you want to be able to use request underscore HTML. So if you haven't got that installed, pip install uh, requests dash HTML like this. Uh, the pip package is dash HTML, but when we import it, we want to do uh, from requests underscore HTML, and we're going to use the HTML session part of that. So that's our first line. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually just going to go right in and I'm going to write the function to get the price. So we're going to write a function that gets the title and the price of the URL that we give it. So I'm going to do uh, define our function and we're going to say get price and we are going to give it a URL. And within this function, we're going to do, um, we're going to get our session. So we're going to do S is equal to HTML session and that's going to handle everything for us there. And then we're going to do R is equal to S for our session dot get and then the URL. After that, the magic line of r.html.render, and I'm gonna put sleep is equal to one in there. It's helpful sometimes to sleep a second uh, after the render, you may or may not need that. So what that's gonna do is that's actually going to use a slimmed down version of the Chromium browser, and it's gonna render that page in the background and allow us access to all the elements. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a product dictionary because we're going to go straight in with this one and we're going to go product is equal to and then inside here we're going to go for the title and the price so those are the two bits of information we're going to get so if we go back to the page and we hover over the inspect and the title we get down to this and we can see the span idea product title here so if you click on that and you probably can't see it on the screen but if you go to copy and copy xpath that basically is the uh, where the information is, and that's how we're going to find the element in this case. So to find it using this, we're going to do r.html.xpath, and then we're going to put that into our brackets, and we're going to do first is equal to true, and that's just going to make sure that we find the first element, um, and then we're going to do dot text because we want the text of that element. And then similarly for the similarly for the price. We do the same price and we can still see that it's in this price block, our price. And again, copy, copy XPath and then r.html.xpath, paste that in there. And again, first is equal to true and dot text. And then we are going to, let's print out the product. And then we're also going to return the product like this. So what we can do now is we can use this function to give the Amazon URL and it's going to return that information for us. I'll show you what I mean. If we do get price and we go and copy the URL I was just looking at, nice and long, paste it in there, save and run. We can see it did indeed work and we've come back with the title and the price. Now this is slower than before, not going to lie, but it does work. And for some applications, it could be, it might not make a difference that it's slow. So if you're just trying to get the price the information for certain products. So if you're running that just to collect the information, you might only want to run it once or twice a day. So it doesn't matter that it's slower. Um, but what we can also do is that we could, I'll just make this a bit smaller so I can type. We could actually take this as well and we could turn it into, um, we could put it into a loop so we could get, give it multiple URLs and get the information out and then store that from a list. So let's say we were trying to compare the prices of maybe, uh, I don't know, we'll use TVs. Maybe we've got three TVs and we want to see the price of them each day and we want to just sort of save the information for a bit of analysis or we want to know if certain ones drop below a certain price or we can do that. So let's give ourselves a list to start with. So I'll do URL list is equal to, 
and I'm going to go and get the three, we'll do three for now, URLs. Um, the Amazon URLs are quite long and unwieldy, so just bear with me whilst I paste them in. We'll, we'll use the first one, this one there. Let's get another one. Let's might as well, might as well be this one. Copy the link. Let's put that in there as well. And let's do 3000 pounds might be a bit ambitious. That one. I don't know, maybe some, maybe you guys have got that much money. So now we have our URL list. Let's just make sure I close the bracket. I did. What we can do is we can just give this for URL in URLs and we can do get price, excuse me, get price URL and that will print, but it also returns the product out of the function. So every time this function is run, it returns it and we can have a blank list and we can have uh, TV prices, that'll do. And we can then do TV prices dot append and we can append that into there and then outside of here let's just print the length of the list so that we know that they are there because we're actually every time I run through the function I've still got this print statement in it and for URL I've called it URL list so I'll just change that to URLs cool so our total code is just one import which is request HTML uh, and we're using HTML session, which basically sort of is going to manage everything for us. I have a simple function that is going to open a session up and we're going to use that session to get the URL. We don't need to worry about user agents in this respect because that's handled with the Chromium browser. We use that to render the page. We find our two bits of information with the XPath, which is these two, which we found from the Chrome browser inspect element. And we're looking for the first one in each case and we're getting the dot text and we're returning the product. Let's run that. This may take a short minute whilst we load all of them up. There's the first one, the one we had before. Do the same again for the next one and the third one. There we go. And we can see uh, this name's quite long, but at the end there, we can just see the number three, which means we've saved them all into our list. So what you could do with this is you could run this remotely on your web server or you could run it on something like that and you could get this to go every day and have a nice long list and maybe it would take a few minutes to run. You could actually make this run much quicker if you used concurrent futures. I've got a video of that on my channel which is um, would be a great application for this um, if you wanted to check that out and you can get the information that way. So thanks for watching guys, hopefully that's helped you. This is probably the best way to get the title and price information from Amazon now. A bit slower but works just fine. Please consider um, subscribing, there's more web scraping content on my channel and more to come and also like and comment. Thank you very much and see you in the next one. Bye.